Sports Talk, a Jet Broadcasting Station. It's that sharp-dressed guy again. Hey, Marky e. Bilson here, 1420 WEMB Sports Radio. Yeah, that came out that way. Okay, we're on Facebook again. 1420 WEMB Sports Radio, Tri-Cities Facebook page. We're back. You know, I was yesterday, I was in Winston-Salem. We had the uh, National Sports Media Association, uh, their annual meeting. Uh, you know, talked to some of the biggest named sportscasters, sports writers in the business. Made a lot of contacts. We're actually going to be getting some guests from that. Uh, it's something they do because I'm a professional, but also because... Uh, you know, it really advances and inspires you and all that. You, you make a lot of, well, you make a lot of contacts there, but that can help uh, breathe. I, I go to these things, and it can really help sometimes uh, those contacts out. Give you an example. When Steve Forbes was interviewing at New Mexico, you heard it here that that interview wasn't in New Mexico. Well, not on campus there in the University of New Mexico. No, they did it all. How do we know that? Because I had made the contact with the sports talk show host from Albuquerque at one of these meetings that I had met. So, there you go. Uh, today's program, you know, we always have the best guests, the hardest hitting opinions in the market. But what we have today is at 1 p.m. instead of Jerry Bonkowski talking NASCAR, he couldn't make it. But Alex Doherty of A to Z Sports Nashville... Uh, our regular Predators guest, he is going to tell us about the Predators trading P.K. Subban, and he's going to tell us about who the Predators draft, when we can kind of expect uh, some results from this year's draft. It's not going to be, you know, Mario Lemieux is drafted number one overall and scores 100 points in his rookie year. That's not going to happen, but when can this power play improve? How will the power play improve now that you've lost? In Subban, one of the better offensive defensemen, or is he? Subban is in the second half of his career. Is he over the hill? Of course, he's dating Lindsey Vaughn, so if he is over the hill, he seems to be picking up speed. 130-year-old buddy So Con John Hooper, talking all things Southern Conference. He's ranked the football t players uh, as he continues to do so. And uh, where does ETSU stack up? Where do the other teams stack up? But also, here's a story over the weekend that's got a lot of people buzzing and buzzing and buzzing about. And naturally, this is Marquis' monologue. And it's the Connecticut Huskies returning to the Big East Conference. I actually spoke with UConn's beat writer yesterday at that NSMA uh, convention and all. It's a boon for the Huskies basketball program. It's a return to tradition, and, you know, now we get UConn, Georgia, or listen to me, UConn, Georgia, I guess they could play, UConn, Georgetown, UConn, Seton Hall, UConn, Providence. All those old great rivalries will be coming back in an era when conference, uh, you know, departures, uh, expansion, all this has meant that we lose college rivalries, well, we're going to be opening up and restoring some of UConn's great, at least college basketball rivalries. But the American isn't going to like this, American Athletic Conference, and so they're going to say goodbye to UConn. That'll hurt them in basketball. They'll still be a two-bid league, of course. But then in football, they lose a 1-11 and team. So, it'll open up a spot in the American Athletic Conference. Who goes? What about Appalachian State? Mountaineers would likely improve the conference's football status. After all, this was a nationally ranked program just last year. They theoretically had the 23rd largest TV market in the country, Charlotte, because Boone is gerrymandered into the Charlotte TV market. And also, I was talking about this in Winston-Salem, with some of the North Carolina sports talk show hosts, and there's a feeling in the Tar Heel State that the best football program is not in the ACC. There's a feeling that the best football program is either Appalachian State 
or East Carolina. Now, to be brutally honest with you, I think that putting Appalachian State as the best football uh, program in North Carolina, that's a bit of a reach. I mean, no, they're in the Sun Belt Conference. I know they took Penn State to overtime. I know they took Tennessee to overtime, but they didn't win those games. You know, I mean, okay, they bring in Miami, but then again, so do the ACC teams all the time every other year, right? You know, I mean... It's got a little ways to go before I think they're NC State, but, you know, I was talking to one guy, you know, five years ago, Lincoln Riley, head coach in, at uh, Oklahoma, back-to-back -back Heisman winners, big powerhouse there for the Sooners, who's to say they won't win the national title this year, and he was offensive coordinator at East Carolina just five years ago. Hmm. Or over here, you know, there's... Scott Satterfield coming from NC State, I'm the really offensive coordinator, but, excuse me, uh, Scott Satterfield, who am I talking about here, listen to me, uh, Scott Satterfield going to Louisville, you know, so, you know, I, 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 the ACC, so I hesitate to say that Appalachian State is the best football program in North Carolina, but if they were to join the American and have a rivalry with East Carolina, then you start to think, you know what, Appalachian State, back when they were in the Southern Conference, used to beat Wake Forest every year. Remember that? Now, I mean, it really would not be in the shadow of Wake Forest. They could actually put Wake Forest in their shadow, at least in football. And where does that leave ETSU? Well, I'm going to get to that here. Appalachian State, by the way, does consider the Tri-Cities to be part of its market, I believe. During the years when ETSU didn't have football, I could see businesses as close as Elizabeth, then, and that's the Tri-Cities, uh, promoting Appalachian State. ASU has generally had a radio f affiliate in the Tri-Cities over the years. What they haven't had is a player from the Tri-Cities suit up since Brandon Thompson did in 2011. He went to Dobbins Bennett. He was tight end for the Mountaineers. That was back when the Mountaineers were in the Southern Conference, but it was pretty Remember, I'm sure everybody around here remembers the Battle of Bristol. I mean, come on. But remember this, Battle of Bristol, and around that week, I mean, this was when the show was getting started, and we used to be talking to uh, Susan Miller-Degnan down there in Miami. That's how we got the contact, why Miami was coming up to Boone to play. And there was significant buzz about that. And then... In addition to Miami, and but if you can remember that, what about beginning of that year, Appalachian State nearly beating Tennessee? If Satterfield had had a kicker, they would have. Said they lost in overtime. So, imagine this. Appalachian State joins the American, now that UConn is almost assuredly going to leave. That means that every other year, Central Florida comes into Boone. Maybe they're not Miami, or maybe they are. Hey, they claim a national championship more recently than Miami. I can debate if it's true or not, but, you know. Imagine if every year the likes of Memphis, Temple, and Houston were to come to Boone to play basketball. Appalachian State would be in a two-bid league. Football program would likely, like I said, begin to have the prestige they've always wanted to have, probably more than Wake Forest, certainly more than ETSU. I mean, if you remember that remake of The Longest Yard with Adam Sandler, if you remember that in the previous decade, I guess that's, what, 15 years ago or so? And there's actually a mention that Paul Crew in the movie, played now by Adam Sandler, makes where he talks about, you know, well, you know, tune-up game. You play somebody like Appalachian State. You know, the Appalachian State had become the epitome of the small-time uh, the, the small team. Now, they could actually be a program that wouldn't just play in the Sun Belt for a Who Cares Bowl, but if they're in the American, they could play for legitimate bowl games. That national ranking that Appalachian State had last year, that could become commonplace. Now, there's no guarantee that Appalachian would be the school selected. Here is, if and when UConn, and I'm told it's a sure thing, uh, here's the thing, there's no Boone Airport. 
Okay, so how do you get there? I mean, this is one of the reasons why West Virginia is in the Big 12. They become, because Morgantown used to be horrible to get to, and now is still, you know, now what airport do we fly into again? You know, this is why, for instance, the ACC has never been real cozy on West Virginia. Or for that matter, the SEC. And if the American wanted the Charlotte TV market, why do they go after the no airport gerrymandered part? Why don't they just go after Charlotte themselves? In fact, if they want a bigger market, why don't they go after Army? You've already got Navy in the, you know, football conference. Why don't you bring in Army, and then you can have the Army-Navy game be a legitimate football rivalry. Now, maybe you only accept Army in football. or so, But you add the number one TV market. West Point is in the New York City TV market. Or if you want to go TV market, and they will, it'll be Georgia State in the 10th largest TV market. What about Florida International? 16th largest TV market. What about Army-Navy being a conference game? What would that do for the American in terms of prestige? Can you see? I mean, even if it's not for a division title in the Army-Navy game, you know, could you not see, and yes, I do understand the logistics because Army-Navy is usually last and usually after the conference championships and all that sort of, so well, you do a little bit of restructuring, but can you imagine if that did have conference championship implications, the Army-Navy game, suddenly it becomes even that much more prestigious. Now, other teams that may, when UConn leaves, that the American might be interested in, Boise State, Brigham Young, long road trip. I know that, you know, they got Tulsa in the American and all that. Still a long road trip, though. Uh, but they do bring, I think, a better football brand than Appalachian State. That's not a knock on Appalachian State. It's just, yeah, the BYU and the Boise State football brands are improving. How about asking Wichita State to restore their football program? Yeah, it doesn't really improve the strength of the football in the conference, although you're replacing a 1-11 team, so how bad could it be? But, I mean, on the table, I guess they're paying Greg Marshall an awful lot of money. Maybe, you know, a million dollars of that is going into uh, his savings account instead of what could be seed money for a football program, but you get the idea. American will lose some basketball prestige with that UConn, but like I said, they'll still be a multiple-choice uh, league. They'll still be a multi-bid league. And it does have the potential to add some football clout because it'll be replacing a lousy football program that likely will become an independent and I'm told is going to hope to play the likes of Massachusetts and Syracuse and Boston College as an independent. We'll see how that goes. But yeah, I mean, consider UCF. They wanted to say, we are the national champion. We deserve a spot in the uh, national championship playoff and all that. Well, you had a good football program into the uh, American, replacing it with a bad one. Maybe that is enough to get them in. Who knows? But there are some local questions. I mean, it really does trickle down here to East Tennessee on a UConn departure to the Big East, leaving a uh, membership opening in the American, if they want to, you know, take in another school, and it does have the trickle-down effect. Number one, does rejoining the Big East make UConn the premier women's basketball program again? It probably does. How will Tennessee be able to compete when the Huskies literally are willing to sabotage their football program for their women's basketball program? And men's, but, I mean, this is what going back to the Big East basically does. The Big Orange are not about to jeopardize their football program. They're not even willing to pay their women's basketball coach half of what their offensive coordinator makes. Number two, if Appalachian State were to replace UConn in the American, where does that leave ETSU? Because the Buccaneers would be forever doomed by their decision to drop football back in 2003 and that stagnated the athletic department and put them in a period of regression, the Atlantic Sun and all this, while their former arch rival gained in prestige and became an improving, and kind of, if they get into the American, hey, I mean, consider that. 2003, Appalachian State, ETSU, same conference. Now Appalachian State, theoretically, 
the American, where does it, I mean, you talk about the inferiority complex or, you know, being in the shadow of Tennessee and Virginia Tech. What about now Appalachian State, who people can remember, you know, ETSU beating with some regularity in basketball or even in back-to-back -back years, although usually that was a loss to the Mountaineers. There were only two victories after 1981, but they occurred in 96 and 97. Hey. You know, I mean, they're, that's memorable to some people, yeah? It would make Appalachian State ETSU look like Boston College Holy Cross, to be honest with you. That's what it would, that's what it would look like. ETSU would be that dwarfed if Appalachian State found their way into the American. Unless, let's say, uh... I think actually the school they'll take if they do, and it would be Georgia State, believe it or not, because of the TV market and the facilities that they're putting out in Georgia. I know Georgia State, 2 and 10 on the gridiron last year, wouldn't help them out there, and they may be looking at that, but they don't, I mean, they got, 1 and 11 is replaced by 2 and 10, admittedly a weaker conference, but it's hard to say that, you know, that's a significant drop. Um... And I actually do think there's more potential for Georgia State in football in the future than UConn. Especially if you put them in the American. But regardless, when Georgia State, if it was that, or if it was Appalachian State, for ETSU purposes, I think they'd like uh, it if Georgia State left. But it would seem the obvious answer to replace uh, one of those schools, if they were to leave the Sun Belt for the American, if that's the way it would plan out, I'll tell you who the obvious school would be. It'd be Liberty. I don't know if Liberty, though, would accept the invite. They're going to be in the Atlantic Sun in basketball, which, you know, we know isn't that great, but then again, kind of, you know, it's not any worse than the Big South, really, is it? I mean, uh, maybe one year it is, maybe another year it isn't, and you get to go to Florida and all those things. You know, I mean... Fort Myers is growing, that sort of thing. You actually become something of a regional brand because the A-Sun now goes from New Jersey down to Fort Myers. Okay, so you get that. They're an independent in football. Looked at the future schedules for Liberty. Do you realize that they have scheduled the Liberty Flames on future football schedules seven ACC opponents? They also will play Ole Miss, Rutgers, and BYU in future seasons. Now, if the Flames are really and truly doing what I think they want to do, which is to become the Baptist Notre Dame, how better to do that than as an independent? I don't know if playing the likes of Arkansas State and Coastal Carolina get you to be the Baptist Notre Dame as much as making your own schedule and, yeah, maybe picking a victory. They could play Western Carolina, I think, not this year, but the season following uh, you know, okay, that's an easy victory for Liberty, or at least they're counting on it to be. And, you know, you, you pile up your stats there, you, you try to get in pad and get the record to look good and all that, if and when something breaks that you can get in Liberty. I mean, possibly, I suppose, they could apply to the American. I don't know if they would get in, but, I mean, you know, it's always a possibility, supposedly. But the Flames, I think, are angling for something bigger than the Sun Belt. So I think if the Sun Belt came a-calling, they would probably say, well, um, no. Um, does that mean, then, let's say if Appalachian State leaves the American, ETSU? Or what if it's Georgia State? I had Scott Carter on here, I said, you know, are you happy with the, Sun with the Southern Conference? Or why wouldn't we, you know? I'm, the football stadium isn't big enough, you know, they'd have to add on, they'd have to start drawing 15,000 fans a game, of course they'd report that they did one way or the other, so that's not a big deal, but, yeah, imagine if it was Appalachian State, imagine if it was ETSU joining the Sun Belt, I'm not sure that they would, but I'm just throwing it out, you know, in theory, boy, ETSU would be following Appalachian State's football uh, footsteps, certainly in football, but Overall, once again, hey, they were the school that, by returning to the SOCON, replaced Appalachian State. I love the way these things trickle down, though. I mean, I see advancement for our area. I talk about the area becoming more cosmopolitan through sports. When I hear something like this, there becomes a chance where that could happen. 
Now I can debate whether or not ETSU would be better in the Southern Conference or the Sun. But I think they might be better in the Southern, to tell you the truth. But nevertheless, man don't grow, he dies. If a school don't grow, he dies. It is going to the Sun Belt, would it theoretically be growing? Maybe, maybe not. There's a lot of two, that's a two-sided coin. But it does become very interesting, doesn't it? And it does affect East Tennessee very much. And I'll say this. I'm not sure that East Tennessee State can afford to really be in the shadow of Appalachian State becoming an American Athletic Conference member, if that's what happens, because of UConn leaving that conference and going to the Big East. It's all speculation. There's no speculation. This is going to be a great show. Alex Doherty at 1 talked about the Predators, and then at 1.30 conversation about this and more with SoCon John Hooper. It's Tri-City Sports Now on 1420 WEMB Sports Radio. Talk some baseball after this.